Hello world, this is H.L. Quist and I am the Mythbuster and what we're going to do today is dispel one of the big myths which is Ben Bernanke's pronouncements and his background and his history and his credibility which I can tell you ahead of time is zero zilch nada or whatever language you want to express it in but worst off what he's doing is he's deflecting us and taking our focus away from the real problem that's going to happen of course which is inflation and of course what he said in an interview last week to the national audience is that that the Federal Reserve had can give a hundred percent certainty that there would be no inflation that the Federal Reserve could control inflation well what we're going to do today is we're going to examine uh, what Mr. Bernanke said and when he said it, which leads us to our point of this discussion today. All right. And a little background. Uh, in November of 2002, Mr. Bernanke was the vice chairman of the Federal Reserve. Alan Greenspan was his boss, and uh, Ben Bernanke was his disciple. He is the one that rubber stamped the Greenspan plan which led to the housing bubble and of course the the bursting of the bubble which uh, we've all suffered through for the last two and a half years but in November 2002 we'd been through you know the dot-com bubble had burst you know there's, a, there's 11 boom and bust cycles since 1974 these guys are expert at it but in November 2002 we'd been through the dot-com bubble bursting and we had been through 9-11 the economy was in the toilet and of course uh, the Federal Reserve came up with a plan to get consumers to spend money and I called that the Greenspan plan well Mr. Bernanke was on board and when he he spoke and he gave a speech in November of 2002 to a financial analyst and so forth in New York City and he said there will never be a depression in this country because the Federal Reserve has at its disposal a new technology called the printing press actually said that folks and then he went on to say he said if the depression was threatening he said we could always we the federal reserve could always drop hundred dollar bills from helicopters <laughs> he was saying this in jest but what is he doing today that's precisely what he is. so i guess he's had some truths in the matter but for that he got the name helicopter ben and he got the job of Federal Reserve Board Chairman. Okay. All right, let's go back, and I have at my disposal here what Bernanke said, and what and when he said it. Okay. We we'll start with May seventeenth uh, of two thousand seven. This is a critical point in time. The effects of the troubles in the subprime sector on a broader housing market will likely be limited. And we do not expect significant spillovers from the subprime market to the rest of the economy or to the financial system. This was a critical point. <laughs> this was echoed by Larry Kudlow when he said one and done when Bernanke lowered the uh, Fed funds rate by 50 basis points. But there was a gentleman by the name of Ed Grandwich, Grandwich who also served on the Federal Reserve Board and he told Mr. Grandspan and he told Mr. Bernanke that the subprime mess was just going to spill over and destroy the economy and Gallon Greenspan told him that's not we're not going there and why didn't he because the bankers who he serves I call them the banksters they were making so much money they didn't want this gravy train to end and of course it did end okay let's go on to October 15th 2007 mr. Bernanke said quote the banking system is healthy rather than becoming more crisis prone the financial system is likely to emerge from this episode healthier and more stable than before this was October 15th 2007 to of course one year later the banking system collapsed in November 8 of 2007, Mr. Bernanke said, we have not, we the Fed, have not calculated the probability of a recession. Po and he saw positive growth going forward into the next year, which would have been 2008. And of course, 2008 was catastrophic. 
Wasn't that a great forecast? Okay. February of, um, I mean, April of 2008. Monetary and fiscal policy should support a return to growth in the second half of this year and next year. We saw the greatest drop in GDP growth since the Great Depression. Wasn't that a super forecast? Where is the credibility? Zero. Zilch. Nada. June 3rd, 2008. He said, Futures markets, continue, future markets continue to predict that commodity prices will level out. Well, shortly after that, commodity prices started going ballistic. You know, we've seen, we've talked about cotton going from 45 cents a pound to a dollar fifty, And of course, we've seen it in wheat and all the grains and so forth. And I've told you many times is that food prices are going to go ballistic starting the first quarter. I mean, they already are, but it's going to manifest itself in the economy in 2011. September 24, 2008. This is right before <laughs> Lehman Brothers failed and the banking crisis was upon us. Mr. Bernanke said, over time, a number of factors should promote the return of our economy to higher levels of employment and sustainable growth with price stability. I mean, we were right on top of it. How could he make that forecast? Well, the point of this discussion today is that Mr. Bernanke, unlike his predecessor, Alan Greenspan was the master of obfuscation. We didn't know what the hell he was talking about. And that was deliberate, of course. Now, we've got Mr. Bernanke, who is the master of misdirection. All right? Because he knows what's ahead. And... What we, do, what we know now is his recent pronouncement, which is bring us right to the current point. And that is, is that the whole point of quantitative easing, or one of the points was other than provide liquidity to the marketplace and support the banking system, is to keep interest rates low. Remember we talked about this in August and so forth? What's happened to interest rates since Mr. Bernanke told us about QE2, all right? The 10-year Treasury bond has increased, interest yields have increased 100 basis points. That means that the 10-year bonds, the 20-year bonds have lost 10% of their capital value, okay? The, the muni bond market is in the toilet. It is, is collapsed over 10% down. Uh, this is, of course, the misdirection and we're, we're seeing the impact of it immediately. And it clouds the issue what's really at hand. You see, what's really at hand is the situation is desperate. Mr. Bernanke is desperate. He is run on a platform that there will never be deflation or a depression in this country. And what we're faced with is precisely that. And let's look at one sector. That's our cities and our state governments. Briefly, Illinois is four and a half billion dollars owed to vendors who've sold the state certain products and services and so forth. They haven't paid a vendor for for five months. They can't get any money in the bond market because their credit is zero. So what are they doing? They're borrowing from Wall Street at 12% interest. That's the sign of the end game. Secondly, New York State. $10 billion projected deficit next year. Do you recall 1975 when New York City actually defaulted on its bonds, on its muni bonds? Uh, the union pension funds bailed them out. There's a gentleman by the name of Richard Ravitch, who was ahead of the pension fund then at that time, and bought bonds and actually bailed out the uh, city of New York. He now is lieutenant governor of the state of New York, brought in to try to cure the problem, come up with a list of recommendations on how they can deal with the crisis in New York State. And you know what he just said and quoted was saying in uh, yesterday's Wall Street Journal? He said, they've turned down all of my recommendations. He said, I've concluded that there isn't anyone in the state of New York who's interested in cutting expenditures. All right. That's important because that's what's happening in the entire country. 
<laughs> you can gore somebody else's ox, but don't gore mine, of course. But what's going on here, too, is that they decided to cut pension contributions to the tune of $11 billion. Now, does that make the, the retirees who are receiving these payments comfortable? Well, it shouldn't. And then we've got the state of California. We don't have to go into this at length, but last week, Governor Schwarzenegger said, <laughs> he declared a state of emergency in the state of California. Now, what you don't know, and here is the important fact, is that because the cities and the states were running these massive deficits, they were in crisis, they couldn't make salary payments, they were issuing vouchers in California for payment of services and so forth, is that Congress and Wall Street came up with Build America Bonds. Not, not a nice name, but they didn't build a damn thing. All they did was pay pension payments and continued the interest payments on the old debt and they continued to make contributions and so forth. It didn't go, it didn't build anything. $140 billion of new bonds to pay service the old bonds huh, subsidized by you and I and the U.S. taxpayers. Now, isn't that nice? Wall Street loved it. They sold a bunch of those bonds. But it ends. It ends on December 31st this year. What are these cities, what are these states going to do? Well, this is one of the reasons for QET, QE2, but people haven't connected the dots. And, of course, there are other reasons, but I'm just focusing on this today. The Bernanke plan, then, is to reflate the economy and pay back the debt with, with cheaper dollars, with funny money. You know, every government since time immemorial have done that. The Romans did this. By the time the Roman Empire collapsed in three or four hundred A.D., was the um, there was only two percent. These were all silver coins, and they kept cutting the silver back until, when the empire collapsed, there was only two percent silver in the coin, which is devaluation of the currency. They had massive inflation, massive entitlements, and of course, history repeats itself, unfortunately, over and over again. But what's happened here is that. Ben Bernanke, the Federal Reserve, all of these masters of the universe that we rely on to, to, sub, to keep this economy going, of course, have created a perfect storm, the perfect conditions for massive inflation and the potential of hyperinflation. And all we have to do is look to our neighbors to the south in the mid-80s, it didn't make any difference whether you were in Brazil or Argentina, Mexico, or whatever. Very high unemployment, 15-20% unemployment, 10,000% inflation per year. Will we reach that level? I don't know. <laughs> but 50% inflation would be ruinous, of course. But that is the plan. Pay back the debt with cheaper dollars, and Mr. Bernanke is guaranteeing us that there will not be any inflation in this country. Now, here is the unusual twist twist. All right, I saw at the beginning of last year, 2011, when I started writing my contrarian market view, an opportunity, an unexcelled opportunity to profit from the reflation scheme. All right, Because in the early stages of an inflationary cycle, which we're now starting, you can make money in a lot of different endeavors and investments. But when inflation starts getting out of control, it becomes a huge problem. At that point, we get the heck out of Dodge, get the heck out of the markets, and we're out of everything. But I see the reflation plan continuing into 2011. I invite you to read a free preview of my newsletter, The Contrarian Market View, on my blog site. And you can get that. You can email me here at uh, uh, YouTube and so forth, and I'll get that information to you. Or you can just Google HL Quist. I'm on Facebook. I'm all over the place. So you'll be able to tra tra track me down. And, uh, but this is a critical issue because all they're doing is buying time. That's what they've, the game they've played forever. And it is, there is the end game. What they're doing is unsustainable. 
I'll say that again, is unsustainable. All right? And we can talk about austerity, we can talk about these other things, but nobody wants their ox gored. And it's going to continue. The deficits will continue. It doesn't make any difference what political party is in office. Right? Okay? So, this is an opportunity. And I hope to, I'll get, get back together with you again. We'll talk, we'll talk again. This is H.L. Quist. I am the Mythbuster, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.